welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis we were discussing the three phase circuits and as a part of the next uh, lecture we will discuss the power in a balanced system so we have seen we have seen that what is a balanced system a system where all the three phases will have the equal magnitude but uh, the different phases for the source and equal phase for the load that is known as the balanced system so if you have the sequence as a b c then the voltages of each phase can be written with equal amplitude which is the maximum value and with a phase difference of 0 minus 120 and plus 120 so we have a phase sequence of a b and c the current in each of the phases that is i a i b and i c will lack the voltage considering the load to be lagging in nature so we have some theta as the lagging uh, load condition so the instantaneous power p can be uh, written as the sum of the power in all the three phases because the system is unbalanced in that case each phase will have the power which is product of the voltage and its corresponding current so a b and c phase voltage multiplied with the current will give its power in that particular phase now with the knowledge of the voltage and the current we can obtain the product and sum of all the three phases we can obtain the total power in the system so the total power in the system after uh, manipulations of certain step using the trigonometric rule we get the final answer as 3 vp ip cos theta which means that the power total in the three phase system is basically three times the per phase voltage magnitude multiplied with the current magnitude and the power factor cos theta okay and in this uh, derivation we will require some alpha term which is 2 omega t minus theta so once we derive the max uh, the total power in the three phase system which is uh, remaining constant so here we can see that total power in a three phase system that is the instantaneous power is constant whereas the single phase power is pulsating in nature so the important points that we can draw the conclusion is that the total instantaneous power in a balanced three phase system is constant it does not change with time as the instantaneous power of each phase does so when we talk about the single phase system the power is pulsating in nature whereas the power in a three phase system is constant and that is the reason it is advantageous to choose the three phase system this result is true whether the load is delta or star connected so it does not depend upon the type of the load the load may be connected in the form of a star or delta but the total power will remain the same this is one of the important reason for using the three phase system to generate and distribute power so whenever we talk about the transmission and distribution of the power as well as the generation where the alternator is used we can use the three phase system because the power is constant and it is does not depend upon the load what type of load it is whether it is a star connected load or the delta connected now we know that the complex power s is basically having two components one is the real power p plus the imaginary component that is the reactive power q now when we talk about the real power which is denoted by p per phase it is vp ip cos theta and the reactive power is vp ip sin theta so per phase complex power which is product of the voltage and the current so if we draw the triangle of power we get the real power on the base the reactive power on the height and the complex power as the hypotenuse and we have a theta which is the power factor n so here the cos theta component comprising will have the real power and sin theta component will give the reactive power so the apparent power or the complex power is the product of the voltage and the current in each phases now the sum of real power and the imaginary reactive power will give you the complex power which can be written as the product of vi conjugate per phase now the power total power in the system is the sum of the power in each of the three phases which is three times the single phase power because the system is balanced also we can write this one as 3 vp ip cos theta and this is in terms of the phase the 
constant is 3 if you write in terms of the line because we know that line voltage is equal to root 3 times the phase voltage so we will be having root 3 VL IL cos theta for the total power in the system. So the main formula to remember here is that the total power S is 3 times the power in each phase which is 3 times VI conjugate for the phase for the phase or 3 IP square into ZP, ZP being the phase impedance. So 3 VP square by ZP conjugate. So we can use any of the formula to obtain the power in each phase and then multiply with 3 to get the total power. Also the complex power is the sum of real power and the reactive power and it is it will be having the magnitude as root 3 VL IL and with an angle of theta. So theta is the angle uh, which we have shown it here. Now let us calculate the power loss. So when we have a single phase AC power which is being delivered to the single phase load through the transmission lines then we have two wires involved in the transmission line each having the resistance R considering that the two wires are identical. So the line current is IL and the voltage VL which is consuming a power of PL. On the other hand if you have a three phase balanced source which is delivering power to a three phase balanced load through three transmission uh, lines each having the resistance uh, noted as R dash. So the wires are identical and the voltage of each of the three phases will be equal which is having the magnitude VL but there will be a phase difference of 120 degree in each phases in a three phase system. So the power loss for a single phase system can be written as 2 times I square R because we have only two conductors. So the current can be written as power square by voltage square and we get this formula for single phase system. On the other hand for a three phase system if we calculate we will be having three conductors so the same way we will be able to calculate. If we divide uh, the ratios of single phase power by the three phase power we will get 2R by R dash. We know the formula for the resistance of any conductor is given by the conductor material which is rho L by A. So we know the formula R is equal to rho L by A which we are going to use where the area is equal to pi R square. Now we can find R and R dash which we can substitute in the power loss formula. So if the same power loss is tolerated in both the system then in that case we will get R square is equal to 2 R dash because this term will cancel out and will become 1 since the same power is tolerated in both the system whether it is a single phase or a phase. Now let us see how much material will be used for a three phase system as compared to single phase system for the same power loss. So material for single phase divided by material for three phase ratio we need to calculate which is which we will get as 1.33 after doing the calculation. What does it indicate? It indicates that single phase system use 33% more material than the three phase system. So if we use three phase system obviously less conductor material will be required and hence the, the system will be economical. We will solve one problem to determine the total average power, reactive power and complex power at the source and at the load. So we have a star connected source and star connected load but we can see that the source and load are connected through a transmission line. So in that case the voltage per phase of the source is 110 angle 0. The current which is flowing through the each phases we can obtain as the voltage divided by the impedance of that particular phase which is equal to 6.81 angle minus 21.8. Now the complex power is 3 times VP IP because it is a source so we will be having a negative sign as active power and then multiplying the voltage with its current conjugate we will get the real term and the imaginary term which are basically the real power and the imaginary power. 
So the power which is lost in the transmission line is 3 IP square into ZP that is under the load condition. So we will be having ZP which is the phase impedance which is equal to 10 plus J8 which is given to us in all the three phases. So the current IP which is equal to 6.81 magnitude angle minus 21.8 which we have already calculated then the for the load the power now the complex power here will be positive because it is a pa passive element here we have a negative sign because it is an active element so the power for the load apparent power is three times the current square multiplied with the uh, current current conjugate so once we have obtain the apparent power of the load in terms of the real power and the reactive power now we can obtain the line uh, apparent power that is three times the current square multiplied with the impedance so we see that whatever the current is coming from the source the same current will be going to the load because it is a series circuit hence the current will remain the same here the impedance of the line is different from the impedance of the load. So we will get the real power and reactive power of the line. Now if we, we the law of conservation of energy says that the power will remain conserved whether for the source line and the load. So if we add the source power plus the line power and the load power it has to come to zero then the system will be balanced and we can say that law conservation of power holds good. So this complete uh, the third part of three phase circuit discussion where we have taken the power into account. In the next lecture which is the final lecture for three phase circuit we are going to discuss the unbalanced system. So we have discussed the balanced system now we will take the unbalanced system. Thank you.